Welcome to Comic Power. I am your host, Comic Killer 72. This segment today is called Wicked Wednesday. If you didn't know, Wednesday is the new release for new comics that come out every week. These are my recommendations for the best books to pick up on Wednesday. I will also name one book to be the speculation pick of the week. Before we get into it, I want to share with you some awesome cosplay by a model named Today Howard who's recreating Riri Williams' look here. Today Howard is a gorgeous Liberian model and her recreation here looks stunning. Just look at this. This looks incredible. I will have links about her in the description. But for now, let's get into the new Comic Day report. First up, DC Comics has given us Deathstroke number eight where he takes on Superman. Unless he's got some kryptonite in his back pocket like Batman, he's going to get his butt kicked by Superman. I'm curious to see how this plays out. The variant looks fantastic as well. Deathstroke has been named as the villain in the upcoming Batman solo movie, so they're using his comic title to make him matched up against the A-list of the DC Universe. Next up is DC Rebirth Holiday Special Number 1. This is a collection of very light-hearted stories about the holidays with superheroes. It's written by Paul Dini, who is credited for creating Harley Quinn on the Batman animated series. The main cover looks kind of blah, so I would get the variant if you can get it for the same price, which is $10. Next up is Raven Number 2, which is going to a second print. DC didn't have any real plan for this. They just put out a six issue miniseries of this character with an aged down version. They usually portray this character looking 17 or 18, but in this version, she looks more like she might be 14, 15 tops. I think she has proven worthy enough to have her own ongoing series. Next up, let's see what Marvel is up to. And that's gonna be Jessica Jones number three. As you can see, they have the Hydra symbol on there. She's investigating something deep undercover and she'll be going deep into the tentacles of Hydra. The David Mack painted covers look fantastic. The Hans variants look incredible as well. You'll see a level of sex, violence, and cussing that you won't see in other Marvel books, but you will see in Jessica Jones. Next up is IVX number one. That stands for Inhumans vs. X-Men. I've gone over in extreme detail why we're having this battle. It's a reflection of the real life battle between Fox and Marvel. Fox owns the movie rights to all of the X-Men. Marvel owns the rights to the Inhumans. So Marvel is doing everything it can to try to make the Inhumans important and try to sideline the mutants. It's not going to work by trying to get the Inhumans to replace the X-Men, but Marvel is going to try anyway and it's going to fail. It's just not going to work. I'm not saying the six issue miniseries won't be good. It's just the politics behind it of why we got here in the first place, which is sickening. Just remember folks, this is a business. Next up is Spider-Man number 10. This is a character that is not forced on our throat and people actually love this character. This is the Miles Morales version of Spider-Man. If you want Peter Parker, you want to get Amazing Spider-Man. If you want to get Miles Morales' title, you'll get the regular Spider-Man title with no amazing in it. Next up is the speculation pick of the week. And that's going to be Hawkeye number one. This isn't the version you know from the movies. This is going to be the Kate Bishop version. Marvel is doing a fine job of giving us more female and minority characters, which is long overdue. And yes, I'm going to give you her first appearance, which is Young Avengers number one from back in 2005. You can find this, buy this now, because I think this character is going to break out. As you can see, Marvel is going to give you a gazillion types of variants like they always do. Like this shagadelic late 1960s London look that looks like something out of Austin Powers. And like I always say, don't get caught overpaying for variants. Buy Hawkeye number one for a cover price and buy Young Avengers number one from 2005 for less than 20 bucks. You should be able to get it for that. Next up is our report on independent comics and small publishers. First up is Batman and TMNT Adventures number two. This is a mashup of the Cape Crusader and the Turtles in the Batman Adventures animated style from the early 90s. And as you can see, Harley Quinn is rocking the cover in her classic look. Before she looked like this, she looked like this 20 years ago. Needless to say, this is going to be a very sought after book because of this cool cover. They're going to have all types of limited variants and all kind of stuff, but this cover, the main cover is fine with Harley. You want that one. Next up is Motor Girl number two from Abstract Studios. It's a story of a young woman who is running a junkyard that's infested by ETs. If you like sci-fi and comedy and like the mashed up, this is a good book for you. But you may have to ask for it in advance. This is a very tiny publisher and so the print run is going to be very thin. Next up, Black Mass Studios promises, I say again, 
promises that Young Terrorist 2 will drop on December 14th. They get the Face Palm Award. I gotta give them the meme because this is pretty ridiculous. I know they're a small publisher, but their delays in shipping are completely atrocious and uncalled for and completely ludicrous at this point. Black Mass needs to stop doing the con circuit and stay home and work on their books and put them out on time. They're also promising to put out Black Number 3, which has been a critical success, but due to their shipping delays, I was hesitant to pick up any Black Mask book, and that's a shame because they put out some great stuff. We Can Never Go Home and May Day both made my top 10 list of 2015. They blamed the shipping delays on lawsuits they were getting served, but I keep seeing them at cons, so I don't know what's going on. Anyway, moving right along. Next up is Shadows on the Grave, number one from Dark Horse Comics. This is written and drawn by Richard Corbin, who is an Eisner Award winner. He's one of the best storytellers in the horror genre that we have in comics today. So if you want some horror in your funny books, this is your guy. Next up is Optimus Prime, number one from IDW Comics. This was supposed to drop on November 30th, but it got pushed back to December 14th. If you want more details about it, watch my November 30th video. Next up is Britannia, number four from Valiant Comics. This is the fourth and final installment of this miniseries, which was critically acclaimed by critics and the public alike. Peter Milligan is the writer on this, the guy who did Shade the Changing Man. When the trade paperback comes out, I'll let you know so you can pick that up. This was an amazing story. For plot details, watch my September 21st video about seven minutes and three seconds in. You really should have at least one Valiant title on your pull list. Next up, Dynamite Entertainment gives us Red Sonja number zero. And what's interesting about this is they're trying to sell this with a gimmick that this comic will cost literally 25 cents. We're gonna see if retailers are really gonna go through with that. I personally believe that Red Sonja is one of the most underrated characters in the history of comics. She was first introduced in Conan the Barbarian number 23 back in 1973 and then spinned off from there. The red-headed she-devil with a sword and she's always had a cult following. Unfortunately, she has not been portrayed in other media very well, such as the 1985 Red Sonja movie starring Bridget Nielsen. Yeah, this is not that good. But her reboot movie was announced by Robbie Rodriguez in 2008, starring his girlfriend, Rose McGowan. However, that got caught in development hell, so it's never going to get made, which is a real shame. We're really missing out on something that could be special. But back to the comics, there's going to be a 1 in 50 Brandon Peterson variant shown here. In addition, there's going to be a 1 in 100 variant from superstar artist J. Scott Campbell, which is going to be very coveted. And these will not be selling for 25 cents, not even close. As you can see, I'm very high on the Red Sonja character. I believe that the property has been mishandled over most of her 43 year publication history, but I did name this character as having the most inappropriate and sexy outfit in comics. Go back and watch my video from June 20th about that subject. Before we close, as always, let's see what Image is up to. And that's gonna be Descender number 17. This is the start of a new story arc and a good jumping on point. Descender won the 2016 Eisner Award for Best Multimedia Artist. Next up is Moonshine number two, which is going to a second printing. It's a compelling Prohibition era story. It's about a New York mobster who sends a team down to the hills of Appalachia to work out a deal with the best moonshine maker up in the mountains, but they underestimate him. It's early, so you can get on the ground floor on this. Moonshine number three also drops this week, first printing, and there's going to be a jock variant for that issue as well. Next up is Reborn number one, which is going to a third printing. This is the partnership between Mark Millar and Greg Capula, who are two comic industry heavyweights. Issue two also drops this week, which is going to a second printing. But wait, that's not all. Issue number three, first printing, also drops this week. I'd give it a try. Next up is Rockstars number one. It's a story about some unsolved groupie murders back in the 1970s, and our hero is this nobody rock nerd who's the only one that can see that there's a connection between all of them. He teams up with a tabloid writer, and they discover some crazy and dark secrets. This is definitely a book you want to pick up if you're a fan of classic rock. And last but not least, Spawn number 268. This book has been in publication since 1982 and was Image Comics' first release. The 1997 Spawn movie looks hopelessly outdated, but hopefully they can get a reboot and update this character correctly in the movies. But for right now, the comic is still very good. 
And here's a quick announcement before I close. Congratulations to William S. as the winner of my ride number zero 99 cent sale. You know, the first full appearance of Bloodshot. His winning bid was $25 and is a good buy. This is a real key issue, but you don't have to wait for a special sale. You can always visit my eBay store at this link. In addition, I have 100% feedback. I know how to handle comics in the mail. That's about it for today. Thank you for watching Wicked Wednesday, where I review all the new comic books for a new comic day. Be sure to follow my blog at comicpower.net. On social media, follow me at facebook.com forward slash comicpower.net and comicpower-universe.tumblr.com. And don't forget twitter.com forward slash comicpowersub. I also sell comics on eBay at this link. This is Comic Killer 72 for Comic Power saying bye bye. to share this video click on subscribe give it a thumbs up and tell everyone you know about this channel to help it grow thank you for your support